up, Piper friends? Welcome to Tim's School of Pipes and Classes in Session. Today, I am smoking some Parsons Blend from the Country Squire. It is an aromatic, but it's a very light, soft aromatic. It's not an overly goopy aromatic. It's a burly and black Cavendish. The tin note, or bag note in this case, since it's a bulk blend, right off the top. Kind of a candied fruit melange. A very light vanilla, um, almost a very soft cake batter, kind of like pound cake maybe. Tiny little hints of clove and some nuttiness and a very light vanilla and caramel type of note. I'm about two thirds of the way through this bowl. Um, no gurgle, no goopiness. Um, you definitely get some very, very light fruit notes throughout, but it's mostly just nutty, um, a, a little bit of, of sweetness, not overly sweet. It's kind of sweet in a pound cake sort of way where it's satisfying, but it's not overwhelming, right? You guys know how pound cake is. It's got just enough sweetness if, if it's made right, if grandma makes it and you don't buy it from the store just enough sweetness to satisfy but it's not overly sweet the fruit notes do tend to uh, diminish as you go through the bowl and then you mostly just get that burly uh, nuttiness with a very light um, vanilla really good really pleasant uh, the best way to describe it is just soft easy to smoke no tongue bite um, I'm smoking it today in my uh, Missouri Meerschaum Charlestown Cobbler. This could be an all-day smoke. Um, I don't tend to smoke aromatics all day, but if you're an aromatic smoker primarily, I can see how this could be an all-day smoke for you. So I want to talk today about the Luddite Revolution, and I wonder if they were right. In the early 1800s, primarily between about 1811 and 1817 in uh, Yorkshire and Lancashire, England. Um, there were a group of folks called the Luddites and they led some protest, what's called the Luddite Revolution, in response to the advent of industrial machines particularly textile machines. So there was a big textile industry in that area. And then new textile machines had just been invented and they were putting skilled labor out of work. And so these guys went around destroying these machines, destroying um, factories and places that utilize these machines because they were putting people out of work. And so I've complained about it before, but as I, I moved out of Pensacola, uh, you know, farther out in the suburbs, but suburban sprawl is just following me. You can hear in the background. A constant, nonstop drone of equipment, hammering, trucks, um, helicopters, it is literally nonstop. And I didn't realize it until I started working from home about a year ago. I come out here um, in my backyard to enjoy a pipe on my lunch break and I cannot enjoy it because there is just this nonstop noise. It puts me in a bad mood. The whole purpose of smoking a pipe is to relax. I know you guys hear that constant drone in the background of just, just equipment. Trucks backing up, hammering. It is literally nonstop. I just wonder if progress is necessarily a good thing. I'm really starting to believe that the agrarians are correct. That us as a society moving away from the land and having that connection with the land 
and being more connected to technology is part of the problem in our world today. Not the only reason, but part of the reason why the family unit is breaking down and those bonds don't exist, why there's almost no such thing left as true community. Um, I just feel like, um, you know, we have no connection to the land, no sense of um, self-reliance. You know, I wonder how many people could actually survive in a an SHTF scenario, right? I think very few. I, I think we are entirely too comfortable and it's because of technology and advancement, which has allowed the, the government to become more and more powerful um, and kind of impose whatever they want and take away our freedoms little by little because we're so comfortable that um, people don't want to be uncomfortable. And the reason we're comfortable is because of technology. We believe that any kind of discomfort is somehow wrong that something must be wrong if you're uncomfortable and I think that the government and their agendas and the world government will continue to make inroads and will continue to make progress toward their end goal of a one world collectivist um, society and government because people don't want to be uncomfortable and so I think the agrarians are right I think that maybe necessarily progress isn't such a great thing and then in my job I've recently started using AI to create newsletters um, you know like chat GPT Gemini there's several other ones and I wonder what kind of effect that is going to have if there's going to be sort of a neo-Luddite revolution and I can see how AI is going to put people out of work but it's going to be different than the original Luddite revolution where blue collar workers were put out of work this is going to affect white collar workers customer service um, um, paralegals um, even mortgage brokers like myself. There's going to come a day where AI can do all of it. I mean, they've already got AI that can speak. When you're watching a video on YouTube, unless you can see the person talking, you don't know if that's a real person talking. It's probably a computer-generated voice, an AI voice with a script that was also created with AI. Um, the pictures are AI created. None of it is real. Um, you don't know what's real or not. There's photos that are completely fake, videos completely fake. Uh, yeah, I'm just struggling with a lot of it right now. I was recently reading the, Unib the Unabomber Ted Kaczynski's manifesto that was written in 1995 and a lot of what he said was correct 100% correct now how he went about trying to deal with it which are sort of the same same things I'm thinking about and struggling right now was obviously clearly wrong immoral in every way dude was off um, but a lot of his thoughts and ideas and things that he talked about were correct it's out there online you should definitely go check it out just type in Unabomber manifesto and you can read the PDF so anyway what do you guys think progress is it a good thing is it a bad thing is it destroying families has it already destroyed families community self-reliance individual thought um, I think so. I think, of course, there's been a lot of positives, but also a lot of negatives. 
and I don't know the answer. And I wonder how this new AI, not new, it's not really new, but it's just getting more, more and more commonplace. I wonder what effect that's going to have 10, 20 years down the road. Um, so for me, I have to move farther out to the country, right? I am Southern, always been a Southern man, but I've never been a farmer. Um, my stepdad was, but I think there's something to be said for these people who are homesteaders, self-reliance. Um, you know, grow their own food, um, build their own houses, or build as much as they can. So, anyway, just my rambling thoughts for today. Uh, the Country Squire Parsons Blend, it's really good. You should check it out if you have not already. Let me know what you guys think. Am I way off base? Or is there something to what I'm saying? And I know it wasn't very well thought out or articulated. I'm just kind of rambling off the top of my head. But let me know what you guys think. As always, I appreciate you for watching. Give me a thumbs up. Drop me a comment down in the comment section. Let me know what you guys think about uh, the things that I have said today. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. Just click my logo right over there. That's it for this episode of Tim School Pipes, boys and girls. Class dismissed.